lot of dice, and this program is going to be used to solve a puzzle. You are given some number of ward dice, as pictured here, where you have a die with a letter on each of the different sides. And your job for this lab is, to, is given word dice and given dictionary words. It's to determine if you can make that dictionary word up of the die you have. So the dies will be specified by a string, one string per die, and the string contains the letters that occur on the die. The die are not constrained to six-sided die, so you can have a die of any size, and the length of that string determines the number of sides the die will have. So for example, if you assume that the above die are three sides each, just the size that you can see, then the die description will be as pictured below. We have one three-sided dies with the letters E and G, one of SAA, PRR, and EAE. -E. So now you're also given a list of words, and your job is to spell the words using the die you have. For example, if the word is rage, you can spell rage using the R from the PRR die, A from the SAA die, G from the ENG die, and E from the EAE die. Similarly, you can spell seep. However, you cannot spell P-E-N, even though all the letters are there, because you would have to use ENG for two letters, and you can only use a single die for one letter of the word. So your job is to write the program word dice, which is called as follows. You give it the program name and then two files. The first file contains the, the dice descriptors, which were specified above, and the second word list is the list of dictionary words that you're trying to spell. In the die list, each die can have a different number of letters within the same die description. And the word list will contain a bunch of words, and they can be different lengths. So you don't have to use all of the die in order to spell one of the words in the dictionary. For each of the words in the word list, your program should print out whether or not it can be spelled. So if the word can't be spelled, you'll print out cannot spell word, and then you'll put the word that you can't spell. If the word can be spelled, the order of the die used to spell out the word should be printed along with the name of the word. And the dies are indexed starting with zero, being the first die in the die file. So here's some examples. You have the die fi dice file that was shown above with the four dice that were three-sided. You also have a words list that contains words you're trying to spell. Then when you run it through the program, it'll print out the dice order if it can be spelled. So you can spell rage using dice two, dice one, dice zero, and then dice four. Similarly, you can spell seep. However, you cannot spell E-R-R -R or P-E-E-N. You can spell gasp. Are there any questions on how, to, how the program matches up, like what it's supposed to do with the matching of the die to the words? Okay, so the way you can organize your program is and solve the problem is by using bipartite matching. And that is a graph that has two sides and connections from the two sides. And each of the sides on one side is connected to some of the, si of the other side. But there's no connections between the same side. So using the bipartite graph, you can set it up so that on one side you have the dice, on the other side you have the word you're trying to spell. And then you'll draw an edge where the, the letter that you're trying to spell for the word matches one of the letters that's on the die. So in this case, E and G is connected to the G, because it has a G in it, and also the E. In this graph, he's included double edges for duplicate letters. However, your program can eliminate those, since a duplicate letter won't help you, and it'll just make your program run slower. The program that Dr. Planck's included does remove duplicate edges, and only has the edge once. Um, you will find that a matching of this graph is composed of edges that connect two nodes where no edge is incident to the same node. Which means that basically you can create a connection so that 
each of the letters that you're trying to spell goes back to one of the die, and none of the letters have to go back to the same die. So in order to determine whether or not you can find the matching of the die to the letter words, then you can do this with a network flow problem. So if you convert your bipartite graph into a network problem, you can add a source that's connected to the die, and then a sink that's connected to the letters of the word. And now to solve this problem, you basically want to calculate the maximum flow. So if you find the maximum flow through the graph, you discover if a match, discover the matching if it exists. So here's the flow matching for this example. So if you calculate the maximum flow, you get maximum flow through these edges. And then you can see that since the maximum flow from the source to the sink is full, because you have full edges of weight one connecting it, then you know that you can spell rage using the, the uh, using the letters on the dot. And for this lab, you're, you should use Eggman's Karp algorithm to determine maximum flow. Uh, Eggman's Karp will specify how you choose uh, paths through to determine a, pa uh, a path that has flow. And then you can use uh, ne uh, network flow and the algorithm to determine how, what's the maximum flow through the graph. What also makes this problem easier is that all the edges between the die and the letters have edge one which allows you to find the maximum flow. If the maximum flow equals the number of letters in the word, then you know that you have a matching. So the program that he has included is slow for two reasons. The first is that he creates and destroys the graph with each word. However, you can make it faster if you don't delete the entire graph, but keep some of it around. Secondly, he, uh, he creates, when he creates the edges for each letter of the word, he uses the find method on the die strings. Uh, it is inefficient and it could be more efficient if you create a 256 element array where each die has a one for each letter the die has set. And that would also speed things up. So basically this being said, the program that you write should be able to run faster or the same speed as the one that Dr. Plank provides. So the first step to solving this problem is to read in the the die and the words and create the graph. And he has a program called Read Original that does this first step. So it will read the input and create the network flow graph and print it out. So you can see from dice one and words, he first, he creates the source, he has the die it's for the first column, and he connects it to the words of the first word, or the letters of the first word in the second column. And these are connected to the sink. And then as you can see, for each word in the words file, he prints out the graph that he creates. So he has it for rage, seep, error, error, peen, and gasp. So that would be the first step you can work on to implement this lab, is making sure that you can create the graphs correctly. He also has some other examples using different files. Dice 2 has dice of different length, and words 2 has words of different length, and it still can solve the problem. Uh, word dice three is six sided dice with six letter words. Dice four is more randomly generated word, dice and words. So he has lots of different examples to, tr to try the program with. And then he has some time information about how long his program took. And then if you run it, if you do the dash O for optimization, it will speed up the execution time because it optimizes the code. And then if you use tools like set, awk, and grep, you can use piping to answer some questions. For instance, you can answer the question how many of the words that, you, that are in the words five could be, uh, could be matched, could be spelled with the dice. And then you can do which ones cannot be spelled. And then you can calculate the success ratio given word dice to being able to spell the words in the dictionary. You can also answer questions like, what's the longest word you can spell? And what's the smallest word that you can't spell? So there's also, for the grade script, your output format needs to match his exactly, which means that you have to do it with the cannot spell and then the word, and then you have to print out the die just like this. So your format for the output needs to match. However, if you, 
if your output is correct, but you use different dye to make up the word, that is good as long as your the, the letters are available on the dye. So there's a program called Grader in the lab directory that will determine if if your output is correct, given the dye that you say with spelling the word, or given that you can't spell the word. And then if you need any help figuring out Edmunds Kopf, there's lecture notes on network flow. Uh, lecture three talks about Edmunds Kopf and how to do it. So here's his Edmunds Kopf notes. And basically it's using uh, breadth for a search to find the augmenting path. So basically, the way this differs from the other ones that he talks about for network flow is the method used to find the next augmenting path. Are there any questions? Okay, that's it. I can answer.